Hey everybody, Tanner Larson here from Build, Grow, Scale, and today I've got a case study with you on how to take this store from a zero to hero. So this is a drop shipping store on Shopify that's doing around $6,000 a month gross sales and around $2,000 to $2,500 a month profit. All right. Now it's not doing a ton of money, but it's been struggling here for a while. And they, the biggest reason they've been struggling in their mind is that they haven't been able to get ads to work. So they think their cost per acquisition is too high. They can't get cheap enough traffic, cheap enough CPMs, cheap enough clicks, and they're really not able to grow their ads. So their income is stagnant on this store. Now they think they have a traffic problem. Okay. They're actually trying to sell the store off because they're like, Hey, we can't get it work. Let's let someone else do it. Now the reality is this store could be a winner. It's doing about six grand a month right now, drop shipped, hands free, fairly simple. It could be doing 50 K a hundred K a month easy if it was just set up the right way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a quick case study of as I'm looking at this store and all the you know over $400 million worth of sales results that our company has done with our partner brands, helping them optimize their stores. So I'm using that as like my, my guide of how I would turn this store around and turn it into a winner. All right, so I wanna take you with me on this journey as we look at this store, which is called Miniatura, okay? And we're gonna talk about it right now. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we are on the homepage of the store. What we're seeing is the above the fold space of Mini Chura, right? Now, the question to you is, what do they sell? Okay, What's, what, do, what do they sell? You see Unleashed Creativity, you see this mobile banner that's uh, moving around and saying different things, but it's not really clear what they do or what they sell, okay? Well, it turns out after I investigated the site, they actually sell miniature like dollhouse type kits that you assemble yourself. So it's a do it yourself miniature, you know, bedroom or house or cityscape or something like that. And you actually assemble it all yourself and, you know, put it together and make it all cool. Would you be knowing that by looking at the site? Absolutely not. Right? So that's one of the big things when people come off an ad, they're expecting to see something that relates tightly to what they just saw on the ad. Okay. They need to know that they're in the right place. This is a subconscious need as well as a conscious need, all right? So buyer psychology is, I clicked on this, I'm expecting to see something specific, and then I get here and I don't. Now this is a homepage, they may not send them to the homepage, but it's still the same thing. Because the homepage is designed to do three things. Number one, it's designed to create trust. Number two, it's designed to uh, show the people that they're in the right place. Hey, is this the right site? Does this site sell or do or feature what I want it to, what I'm expecting it to? And third, it's designed to help them get off the homepage further into the browsing and buying uh, behavior that we want them to take. So get them off the, off the homepage, into a category page, onto a product page, something along those lines. This site does none of those things well, okay? And we're on the homepage right here. Plus, if you look at the above the fold space, it makes it look like there's a false bottom it, it, because at the bottom of the page, you can't see anything else but the image. So there's no incentive to scroll which you want people to scroll more on your sites. It increases conversions and everything else. So there's what's called a false bottom. So what you would want it to look like at the very least is to have something below the fold showing. So it's like, oh, what else is down there that I should look at? Okay. The other thing they're doing poorly is with this ginormous banner that doesn't even fit on the screen is it doesn't actually convey any value propositions. It doesn't convey what the site does. It doesn't actually make me want to look at more or know what it is that you're doing. So, the banner above your fold and above the, the hero banner that we call it should be showing your unique value propositions, showcasing a specific product and, or just demonstrating what your brand is about and your value propositions. Okay. It can do any of those things, but it should not be moving. This one is actually a rotating sliding banner. Um, and you don't want that. You want it to be static. Okay. Um, it goes through a multiple different things like this. Okay. You don't want a, a, a mobile banner. Okay. Now guys, everything I'm telling you just for, you're like, why is he saying this? How does he know this? Okay. So build, grow, scale, in case you're wondering, and you don't already know, we are an e-commerce optimization company. We partner with brands. We have our clients, we have our own brands, and we do optimization for e-com stores 365 days a year. That's all we do. We have 70 full-time employees that do nothing but optimization, including Google analytics, Google tag manager, split testing, data optimization, and t all that stuff. Okay. And over the years we've done hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of sales and testing data that I'm using as my background, as I'm explaining this to you, I'm showing you best practice. I'm showing you, Hey, this is what I know works on stores. And if this was my store to turn around, this is the first things that I would do page by page to make it work. Okay. So 
you can know what I'm saying is actually coming from actual experience in the trenches knowledge of what actually works on a Shopify store. So as I'm explaining this on this store, Miniatura, what I would do to take it from 6K to 50K to 100K or more a month, think about your own store and look at it in a way that like, oh, maybe I'm doing something, some of these same things and how can I implement those on, your, on my store, all right? And if you want someone to take a look at your store for you instead of just watching these videos and you'd like one of our team to do that, we've actually made that possible. If you go to buildgrowscale.com forward slash audit dash my dash store, you can actually get on a Zoom call with one of our revenue optimization experts who will go through your store just like I'm doing right here and show you the good, the bad, the ugly, where it's leaking, what it needs help with, where, how it can be optimized more, and really just answer all your questions and show you exactly what your store needs to do to basically go to that next level. But anyway, let's get back to this critique, okay? So the next thing in this above the fold space that we need to talk about is the top level navigation, the main navigation. First of all, navigation should not be a catch-all to throw all kinds of links in there. It should be specifically purpose-driven. And the purpose of a navigation row is to get people further into the buying journey, okay? Not show all your links, okay? Now, there's a homepage link here. They don't need that. That's wasted real estate because there is a miniature logo that they can click on that everybody knows takes them back to the homepage, okay? There's a track order link. Now, I know a lot of drop shipping sites use this. It's more of a monkey see, monkey do thing than it is actually necessary, all right? Out of the 25 different partner stores that we have that are all doing a million dollars or more per month, none of them have that in the top. We haven't let them do that. They don't need it, okay? If you really, really want it, put it in the footer, it's okay. But it does not need to be in the top. Contact, great, you have a contact link. It should be contact information on the page, either the email address or the phone number right there in the header and then you can still have a contact link down at the bottom. And collections. Now, collections on a normal store could be good. On this store, is it helpful? Because no, it's not, because I don't even know what you sell. So I don't wanna have to guess what's gonna happen when I click collections, because I don't know what you sell. And then you've got catalog, which again is a, it, implying that I know what you have to offer and that I want to, to do this, okay? Now, if we hover over catalog real quick, you can see they have basic, beginner, intermediate, advanced. They have houses, music box, miniature, light, mini world. So I've looked at this site already. And one of the things that I learned is their main four categories of products of these miniatures is houses, music boxes, miniature, light, and mini worlds. Okay. So, and then you can shop based on beginner kits, intermediate kits, inter and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. So what would be better here would be a, a navigation thing that says shop by skill level. Right. And then they could drop shop by beginner, intermediate, advanced. Then you could also have houses, mini worlds, miniaturas, and they can click on those things to get into it, all right? And then that would work as long as the hero banner, the main banner right here, actually displayed what the products were. So in their case, if they didn't know what to do as a banner, they could get rid of the banner completely and actually just have the four main categories displayed with images and links to those categories right there instead of the banner and have a much, much better success on their homepage, okay? The final thing I wanna talk, actually two more things that I wanna talk about above the fold right here is number one, at the very top, get 10% off while purchasing two plus miniatures, all right? So that is very convoluted wording. It's not very clear. It's not easy to understand. All they're saying is get 10% off when you buy two or more, right? That's a much easier way of saying it, but this is not, there's a lot of uh, not great uh, English sentence structure on, on this site. And that's one of the things that's hurting them. So that could be changed as well. Also potentially combining that, they have a free shipping offer when you spend over 70 bucks. So allowing people to see that as well would be very beneficial because you don't actually find that until you get into the cart, which may be a decision that people need to know or a, a thing that would help them make their decision before they get to the cart, right? The other thing is the search bar. Now this store has a lot of different products. Most drop shipping stores have a lot of different products, but the search bar is hidden behind this magnifying glass, okay? And when you click it, it comes up with this really ugly search box that you have to search the store from and it takes you to another page. Now, again, testing has shown, studies have shown over and over and over again that the average internet user does not actually know what that magnifying glass is, okay? You think it's common sense, but it's not. They don't know that it's a search bar. They don't. It's not instinctive for them to click on that to find a search. On a store that has many products, even a store that only has few products, search is very important, okay? I used to believe 
that search was a necessary evil because I'm a sales funnel guy and I didn't like search. But again, testing has shown, studies have shown that search is massive, okay? Now, the amount of people that are on your site, the highest converging segment of those people are the ones that use search. So even if it's a small percentage of the people that actually use the search bar, they convert two to three times higher and spend two to three times more money, okay? It's a massive difference. So you want that there. The other thing is you can collect Google Analytics data on the search history and find all kinds of ways to optimize and dial in your site, your messaging, your ads based on how people search on the site. So when we suggest a search bar, it should be a prominent search bar in the header. Think of like a big Amazon style search bar, okay? And it makes a lot of money because they're two to three times more valuable than any other traffic on your site, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and scroll down the page a little bit. We're gonna get into more of these, but if you go down below, the next thing is their featured collections. Okay, these are their main categories of the site. Houses, music boxes, mini worlds, and miniature, miniature alike. But if you look at it, now this site, I mean, the color combination on this site is honestly terrible, okay? It's not inviting, it's hard to read, and it's actually stressful on the eyeball. Okay, this, this off pink grayish mauve color with, with these bright white boxes and white text, the eye has to work hard to read it. And it, it's, it's a cognitive load that's not necessary, okay? This, could, this site would be very clean and much more professional looking and, and have much a higher trust factor if it was just a traditional white background with, with some color you know, accents around it like a normal Shopify store would look like, okay? So there's no reason for it to look like this, okay? But this is, causes cognitive load. The, the demographic of this store, a lot of them have eye problems. They wear glasses, so they're squinting. It's just making it hard. And if you have a backlit screen like most monitors are, it makes it even harder to see, okay? So you can, would want to change this around. But those categories are actually good categories until you hover over them and then they disappear because you can't read it anymore once the button disappears. So a static button here would be better. And in my opinion, what I would do if this was my site, I would leave these same four categories here, change the background to white, and then just put a uh, black border or a border box around the categories to, to indicate that they are a like a button box. And that would look way better. And then also get rid of this hovery button thing and just make it a solid black button. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see they have their philosophy. Now the philosophy is basically kind of their unique value propositions, okay? They're not the greatest, but saying they're beginner friendly, it's their worldwide delivery and everything in one box. But the thing is, is each one of these links out to a different page, okay? One links to the shipping, one links to shopping based on your, your skill level. And then this one in the middle that says everything in one box, which is actually a pretty cool GIF showing everybody unpacking what they get, leads you to the About Us page, which makes no sense whatsoever, all right? Now, I'm not saying these aren't important bits of information, but they're not displayed in a way that's easy to read, easy to understand, or in a way that the shopper is going to use it, okay? So the next thing down is this shop by difficulty level, basic, beginner, intermediate, advanced. This is great, but this should actually be moved up right below the main collections where, hey, here's the different categories. And then if you don't know what category, but you want to just shop based on your skill level, shop by that. And then below that can be the philosophy or the value propositions, okay? And this everything in one box image, this would be better served up on the page or even on the product pages where people actually can get a, a, a feel and see what they're getting in the box, okay? Because again, and if I hadn't told you, you would have no idea what this store sells, right? Or that it's a, you might think they're miniatures, but you wouldn't realize that they're do-it-yourself miniatures and you have to build them, okay? The only indication that that might be the case is if you're really careful and you look at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see a pair of tweezers, okay? But I didn't even notice that until just now and I've already looked at this site, okay? So this is a problem. All right, but now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the, the buyer's journey portion. We're gonna start, start browsing, right? So the next thing is, let's say I wanna look at houses. I'm gonna click on houses and I get in here to the category page, okay? So now I'm on the category page, but first of all, before we get into the category page itself, notice what disappeared. The navigation, the top header, the logo of the site, the trust factors, the communication, the links to, for me to find other things, the search bar, all of it's gone, okay, now that I'm on the category page. And I see this a lot on beginner stores and dropship stores that, that use like funky themes or whatever. That header should translate all the way through the store, okay? So it's consistent. So now here's the question. I, did, I clicked houses. I don't, want to, I don't want to look at houses. I want to look at something else. What other cat? Oh man, I can't remember. How do I get out of here? How do I go back 
to the home page without clicking the back button? How do I go to the next category that I want to look at without having to go to the home page? They're making it very difficult for the browser or the shopper to actually have a good experience on this site. Plus, as you can see, the color scheme on this site is still bad. All right. Now, the only thing that they have here, it says houses require steady hands and attention to detail. I would imagine that's the same thing for all of their miniatures, right? Since they're, you're having to build them and they're tiny, they all require steady hands and attention to detail. This is not a sales benefit. This is not helping someone make their decision. So it doesn't provide any value and it actually could turn people off. Then they have this sort by functionality with a default set to alphabetically. Nobody sorts alphabetically, okay? People are gonna sort by, they prefer best selling or featured, potentially high to low, but the, the default should be set to best selling. However, I'm gonna change that to best selling and notice nothing changes, okay? I'm gonna change it to featured, nothing changes. So their sort by functionality doesn't even work, okay? Then if you go down to the product displays, you've got three across, which is actually pretty good. We usually say three across on desktop, two, two to one across on mobile, okay? But you look at it, it says a quiet study, and then the price is this super hard to read font again, same thing that they had in their header. It makes it even harder to read, and I'm squinting to see that it says $46.95, okay? That's not ideal. Think about your demographic, okay? Cutesy never works. Clarity just trump, trumps all. Clarity trumps persuasion, it trumps cutesy. Make it clear, make it easy, make it intuitive, make it user-friendly, and you're gonna have a much better experience for your customer. Now, another thing that I see a lot on drop shipping stores, and this one is no exception, is that the category page is an afterthought. It's, hey, I need a way to group my products together so I have a category page, but you know what? It's not important because the only thing that's important is the product page. Well, I hate to break your bubble, burst your bubble there, that the category page is actually very, very effective in boosting your conversions, click-through sales, the whole thing. You can dial in your category page and see a global lift in conversions across the board. And it happens every single time we do it because category pages are much more important than people think. So on this category page, one of the first things that needs to happen here is a way for me to sort, okay? Now, let me just scroll for a second. You can see there's a, quite a few products and there's at least five pages of, of products in this section. The category page is not designed for, for me, you as the seller to make me sort through and see all your products, okay? The category page is designed to allow me, the shopper, to find what I'm looking for and sort out what I don't want very, very quickly so that I can get to the product quicker. I don't want to have to sort through everything. An example, they, sort, they have beginner, intermediate, advanced, and basic categories, right? What if I want to look at houses, but I, I only want the advanced stuff? I don't want any of the beginner stuff. How do I do that? I can't. I have to scroll through every single thing and then guess, is this an advanced or a beginner or whatever? So I can't sort by that. What if I want to sort by room type? Or like, I want uh, Ottoman Tokyo, that's a cityscape. What if I'd like to sort by all cityscapes? Or I'd like to sort by bedroom or study or whatever these different room types are. Or a color combination or price. You're making it hard for me. If I want to see all of the cityscapes together, there's Tokyo, Blue Coast, um, Chinese New Year. Okay, so I've, I've seen three, but I had to scroll through the entire page to see three when I should be able to check a box. So think about Amazon, think about Wayfair, where you have that left side checkbox style uh, filtering. That's what you want. And it's not hard to do. There's apps out there that allow you to do that. So that's the first thing that I would add on this page is filters, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and jump into a product now. And the only product that even kind of stands out to me on this page is this one right here that says save 6801, which I can barely read again because it's in that funky font and the color scheme on this site is just atrocious, all right? But we're gonna go ahead and jump in here. So we're gonna click on this product. Okay, so now I'm on the product. Now what else is missing again on this page? The same navigation, the same search bar, the same trust, the logo. It's supposed to be consistent across the entire site, okay? We're looking for things that are prototypical, what the buyer is expecting, what the buyer wants to see. Someone is thinking here, hey, this is gonna boost my conversions to make this rock, right? It's not the case. Now, something else that I want you to see before I get into the details of this, at the bottom right here, it says back to houses, okay? That's assuming that I came from the house category page, which I did in this case. But what if I came from the beginner intermediate page or the advanced page or a, a different location on the store? 
So you, they, they're making this assumption that I want to go back and see all the houses, okay? Now, let's go ahead and jump into the, the product page and, and what I would change here. First of all, I get rid of this font again, all right? It's hard to read. It doesn't make any, it's not easy to, to visualize. The next thing is the add to cart button and then the buy with PayPal button and then below that more payment options, okay? First of all, there should only be one button on a product page, okay? And that button should be the add to cart button, okay? Now, should you accept PayPal? I 100% believe you should. Should you offer PayPal to check out from the product page or the cart? Absolutely not, and let me explain why. When someone clicks that button, which I guarantee you in this case, that's what most people are clicking because it's the most prominent and it sticks out. But when they click that, it takes them off of the store and takes them to PayPal. So they've never actually added a product to cart, which means you can't do any dynamic cart retargeting, you can't do any uh, cart retargeting ads or abandonment follow-up, okay? It also means they'll never make it to the checkout which means they don't enter their email address, which means you can't do email cart abandoned. They also won't enter their phone number, so you can't do SMS cart abandoned, which are two of the biggest money makers on a store because you let them go to PayPal too early. Should you have PayPal? Yes, but it shouldn't show up until they're in the checkout, okay, on the payment information page. You should have it suppressed everywhere else. Also, more payment options. I haven't even decided if I want this product yet. Why would I need more payment options, okay? You're presenting the, the wrong information at the wrong time, okay? So if this was my store, if we were turning this store around to take it from you know, 6K to 20K to 100K to whatever, the first thing we would do is get rid of the PayPal button, get rid of the more payment options button, change the add to cart button to a solid button. And in this case, it should probably be a black button if they're staying with this color scheme because their buttons on the home page and the category pages are, were black. Okay, so you want all your buttons to be the same color so that it, the eye is trained on this store to know that, hey, the next time I see this color, it's the next action I'm supposed to take. It's a subconscious training of the brain. Again, think about a stop sign. You don't necessarily have to see the stop sign, read the colors, or read the, see the color and read the word. You see the shape and you immediately know I need to stop, right? Because you're trained to be triggered by that. You do the same thing with your add to cart button, your proceed to checkout button, your view products button and all of those. Now, the images, they have Zoom turned on. Now, actually, they have Zoom turned on, but Zoom is not actually working on this site right now. And it's actually taking me to a different, so there's some, they got a bug on here. Now, Zoom should be turned off anyway, guys, because Zoom, it causes havoc on mobile. So you just wanna make sure your images are zoomed in enough on naturally that you can see everything, okay? So now they've got, oh, See, this is not supposed to happen, guys. You're supposed to be able to click to the different images without it changing. Okay, so this is a problem. Now, most themes don't do this. This may be a bug on, on this theme specifically, but as they click through images, it should take them to the next image in the same frame without loading a different page, okay? But if, what's the, where do I have any information about the product? I don't. The only thing I see above the fold is says, depending on the product availability of different warehouses, our shipping time is usually around eight to 14 business days. Is that the best place to present that? Is that what I care about right now while I'm looking at this product? Or would I be more interested to know, number one, that it's DIY, that I have to build it, still haven't told me that anywhere on the site, right? That's a problem. I, what if I buy this thinking it's gonna be assembled or I'm buying it for my kid and my kid's five or six or whatever, and they have to put it all together. I'm gonna be pretty unhappy. But instead you're just telling me that, hey, our warehouses have different shipping times, blah, 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 blah eight to 14 days. This is important information, but not here. What is important here? How about some product information, okay? So let's scroll for a second. Before I see any product information, now you're trying to hit me out with best sellers saying, hey, buy this product too. I haven't even decided that I like the product above and they're already asking me to, to check out something else. Now, should this be here? Yeah, 100%, but it should be at the bottom of the page. But as we continue to scroll, we find out a very basic feature set, which this is again, not super great in terms of telling me anything. It still doesn't tell me that I have to assemble it. It does tell me that it's about a 25 hour project to assemble. It gives me some sizes after it's assembled, but they're not easy to understand because it's not laid out in a format that's very crisp and clear. It's also white text on an awful background, but that's not really that much information for me to make a decision, is it? Maybe I have other questions, right? And then I see that they have this video of the product Video on a product page is powerful, but I shouldn't have to scroll one, two, and a, two and a bit to be able to see it. It should be right up there either as an, one of the images 
or right here under the button where they can get the details. So the features should, and benefits and the information about the product should be up there, the video should be up there, and then down here they have this guarantee and this important note, which honestly, they're so hard to read, I'm not even gonna try. But is this information? Yes. Is it presented correctly? No. The other thing that's missing here is they have zero reviews at all. Not even a way for people to add reviews. There's nothing, no star ratings up here. There's nothing, it's just the product, okay? Now this store is making sales. They're making about $6,000 a month. They're making um, you know, $2,500-ish in profit. They're making sales. They have reviews. They have the ability to get reviews. Reviews are social proof, guys. People want to know that other people have bought the products and have liked it. They don't want to test this in the dark just hoping that if they spend $167, they are going to be satisfied, okay? So there's a lot of things here. All right, let's go ahead and check the cart. So I'm gonna add this to cart. Oh, I have a bunch of stuff in the cart right now. So, um, so you know what, guys? I I'm just gonna remove some of this stuff. Oh, there's a remove button. Remove, remove. Okay, so let's go back. I don't, let me go back to the, see, okay. Now if I click back, it should take me back to the, the product page, okay? All right, I'm gonna click add to cart. Let's start over. Whoa. Now that didn't happen last time. Did you see that? There was a pop-up that had this thing saying your cart's being updated. What, does it happen again? So it doesn't happen the next time. It did add the next product to the, to the cart, but it didn't, it didn't happen again. Okay, so the, they're using a side slide drawer cart, which is okay. It's, these are good. We like these a lot. Um, and then it says, you know, you got two in the cart, two plus, and so it automatically applied the two plus miniature discount, which that's nice. It's got the savings at the bottom saying I saved $33.59. That's really great. But now you can see what I talked about at the beginning. It says free shipping on orders over $70. That's something I would have liked to know before I clicked the add to cart button because that would have made, might, might have made me even click the button sooner. Okay, or someone who didn't click it at all was like, oh, I'm gonna get free shipping and I'm gonna save money if I buy two important information, but it's so faint down there in the bottom, I would have probably missed it. Also, another thing that I would do is I would change that to using some coded functionality or an app that actually calculates the free shipping and tells me, hey, you've just unlocked free shipping, your order ships free, or add one more item to get your order to ship free. That way they actually know, okay? Now let me change my quantity down and see if the, yep, that, that, that works, okay? And then I'm gonna click off of this and I'm gonna to try to go to the, that full cart. So remember guys, when I first clicked the add to cart button, it took me to the full cart, like the, the original standard sh cart. But now if I click the cart icon in the top, it takes me back to the drawer cart, but not the actual cart. So there's all kinds of weird stuff going on here that's creating a weird shopping experience. And I'm a guy who actually knows how to use a store really well because it's all I do. And I'm still confused. So imagine how the end user is because the buyer's journey is not super awesome. Also, this checkout button is a different color than the add to cart button, which is a different color than the buttons on the homepage, right? And it shouldn't say checkout because they're not actually checking out. They're proceeding to checkout, okay? The verb makes a difference, okay? Now, guys, I'm talking about a ton of different little things, and you're probably going, dude, he's nitpicking this to death. You're right, I am. Because just like many little streams of water funnel in to make a big river, on a store, the way you get massive wins and scalable geometric growth is through small little tweaks and lots of different areas to the site that all add up to massive wins and, and growth. And what I'm showing you here, all these things that I'm saying that I would change to turn this store from a zero to a hero is what it takes to really dial a store in. And you could be making these same changes to your store. I'm sure some of the stuff that I've talked about today are problems on your store as well. If you'd like to be sure and you want one of us to take a look at your store, I know people are always asking us after seeing one of these critiques, dude, I wish you would just look at my store. Okay, we've actually made that a, a test offer that we're testing right now. So if you go to buildgrowscale.com forward slash audit dash my dash store, and I'll make sure that's on the screen here for you guys and also in the description, click that, you can get a, a chance, you can, right there is a scheduling link, you can book a call to get on a live Zoom call with our team our, one of our revenue optimization experts will get on a Zoom call with video just like this, and they'll share screen, they'll look at your store, you can ask them questions as they go through and audit every page of the store to show you where you're leaking and how you can make it better. So I highly recommend, if you can see that, man, this store needs some help, and you can think, man, I wonder where my store is leaking, there's no better way to get it 
from an expert who actually does this. You can watch a ton of these videos and pick it up piece by piece, or you could just go straight to the source. So highly recommend you do that. But now let's go ahead and get back to the, this case study, click the checkout button and see what happens. Okay, so it's taking its time. All right, so now we're in, we're in the, the checkout, but I wanna go back to this cart real quick. So I'm gonna click this icon and see what happens. Okay, so now it takes me back to the cart that we saw before, okay? And now I didn't get to see this in, in full because it was all messed up, but the original cart that I saw before, pretty sure it was a white background. So this is a different cart, okay? Actually, no, no, it's not, it's the same cart. Never mind, I'm wrong. So let's look at this cart. Now in the cart, this is the one page on your site where you actually don't want all of your top level navigation and stuff. You do want your logo to show up, but all this navigation should be suppressed because once they're in the cart, the only thing you want them to do is click proceed to checkout, okay? So now we're in the cart, which I should have been able to get to just by clicking the cart icon up above, but the only way I was able to get to it was by backing out of the checkout, okay? So everything is white, but then my quantity is black. So there's just some styling issues here. Obviously, it's all hard to read. I can barely read the word quantity. It doesn't even look like a Q. Um, and then it says free shipping over orders over 70. Now, but it also has an update cart button. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so I just changed my quantity to two. It didn't update. Now in the side slide cart, when I changed my quantity there, it did update. Okay, so but their actual cart is broken. And now there's an update cart button, but I shouldn't have to do that, guys. This is old technology to have an auto updating cart. So what happens if I click checkout without updating the cart? Let's see what happens. Okay, it, it pulled it into the cart, but it didn't update my cart. So I didn't know that the price was different. So if I go to three, this subtotal should update, but it said it doesn't. So I'm thinking I'm gonna spend 302, but then I go to the checkout and now I'm spending 503. Plus I only got, I had $50 in savings, which is more than the $33 in savings it was showing me because the cart is busted, okay? Now let's, I've got one more thing I wanna show you since we're talking that, let's go back to the cart and back to the product page for a second, okay? Um, we're gonna go back to this product page there's something else missing from this page that shouldn't be here. You just saw me adding quantities in my cart, right? And on the check, shouldn't I be able to change how many quantity of the product I buy right here on the product page? It's a pretty standard feature, right? But it's not here. I should be able to select one, two, or three. And then if I select two, it automatically gives me a little notice that says, hey, 10% discount applied. Or when they select a, a drop down from a bundle, I can select two or more or whatever to get the discount. But again, I don't have that. So everything I'm talking about here, guys, are all objections and speed bumps. If you think about this buyer's journey from people landing on miniature to wanting to buy a miniature, which is a very big audience, by the way, every one of these things we're talking about is like a speed bump they're having to go over. And every time they hit a speed bump, it's a chance for them to just bounce and say, ah, I'm frustrated. I don't care. I'm distracted. It's just too much of a hassle. I'm not going to buy. I'll come back later. And then they never do, right? So let's go back into the cart, which the only way for me to get to the cart is by adding to cart again when I should be able to click the button, right? So now we're gonna go back, let's see, I'm gonna go back to one and see if it does it, if it fixes it. It does, now we're in the checkout, okay? Pretty standard checkout. Now this store is obviously not making as much enough money to be on Shopify Plus, it's not cost effective for them, so they're using a regular plan. Now, if you're on Shopify Plus, you have the ability to completely customize and dial in and optimize this checkout. We are very, very good at making the checkout convert like crazy at Build, Grow, Scale. If you'd like to see what a fully optimized checkout looks like with a Plus store, go watch some of my other videos. We've got a ton of those, okay? But in this store, and in your case, you're probably not on Plus either, there are some things on here that you can do to optimize this store, okay? The only thing they've done right now in this cart to quote unquote optimize it is they've turned off the company field in the shipping address, which that's a good one to turn off because it's not necessary, okay? But they have... The first thing we're gonna talk about is this logo up top. Now your logo in your checkout is a separate logo from the rest of your site, so it can be modified. This is an area where you wanna put your customer service information, your phone number and your email address, just like you wanna have it on every other page of your site in the header. So you add that there, that gives you a boost in conversions and trust factors and, and it, it's a big deal, okay? It doesn't necessarily mean people are going to call you. It just means they know that that number is there or that email is there in case they have a problem you're not trying to hide, they know they can get a hold of you. The next thing is the email, okay? Obviously you need to collect their email, but chances are you're not gonna get the best email unless there's a legitimate reason for why you're asking for it. So we like to put micro text in these fields that say email, 
parentheses, required for order updates, right? Obviously, they want to give you a good email address so they get all their order updates. Then you go down to the bottom, you got the phone field, okay? The phone field is an optional field in most stores, okay? You could turn it on or turn it off or make it required. If you're not using the phone field for SMS messaging and marketing or you're call, not calling your customers, then turn the field off. It's one of the highest error rate fields that can cause checkout problems because people don't want to give you a phone number because they don't think you need it. So if you're not collecting SMS or making phone calls, then don't have the phone field. But if you are, then at least make the field required. And again, tell them why you need their information. Parentheses, required for shipping updates, shipping notifications, something along those lines. And then actually give them that information. So also, as you can see, the continue to shipping button, which is the, second, the first button in the checkout, is black. Okay, but every other button, as we talked about, was a different color. So making those all consistent, making them all black or whatever, would be very beneficial. Plus, now they have this orangey color here in the cart. They're introducing a whole nother color that was not part of the site in any other way. Okay, so there's some really simple optimizations you can make to your checkout, you know, to get this all dialed in. But overall, like this store, guys, should be converting way higher. This store could be making a lot more money. It's a very unique niche. It's got great products. Um, their, the imagery is actually very good. Oh, no, that's interesting. Look at the, this product. This product is actually showing me the, the next image in order, but that other product I went to was loading the image in a whole nother window. So now this is good stuff, but you know, here's the, here's the problem again. From, I don't know that this is a DIY store. Okay. I didn't like, I would think if I just saw this, oh, cool. I'm going to buy this for my daughter. Okay. But if I bought this and then found out later that it was this crazy do-it-yourself, let's see, let me show you. So let's go down here. This thing, see this moving GIF? Like if I unwrap that thinking I was going to have a regular thing, toy to hand to my daughter and then it's, no, guess what, you got to build it? That's total bait and switch without intention, right? They're not trying to bait and switch it. They're just not doing a good job of communicating. So they're not, but this GIF, if you could add this GIF or one specific to each product, to every single product and people would be like, oh, okay, makes sense. But it would also make sense to put that in the description. You know, do it yourself assembly takes roughly 25 hours expert skill level or advanced skill level, right? These things are great, right? They're good products, good views, good everything. But the problem is this store is haphazardly put together. This is why this store is not getting above 6K a month in sales. They're, six, they're making $6,000 in sales in spite of themselves, okay? Not because they have a great store. They're, they're lucky they're getting $6,000 in sales because the store is so broken from a buyer's journey experience, from an optimization standpoint, okay? Now, if you take this, what I'm showing you on this store, if this store implemented everything we say, they would definitely be able to scale to, you know, 50 to 100K a month or, or beyond, okay? They, all of a sudden, traffic would convert for them. They'd be able to buy traffic, have a high enough AOV to make this work. And we're not even talking about advanced stuff like post-purchase funnels, order bumps, or any of the other things that can really help boost this store. I'm just talking about simple, easy optimizations that any store can make. So as you're watching this, if this is you and you have a store that, that's a drop shipping store or any store, take what I said here and go look at your store and say, hey, am I making these same mistakes? And then again, if you'd like to actually have our team take a look at it, let me just show you. So if you go over here to buildgrowscale.com forward slash audit dash my dash store, I'll load this page so there's no surprises for you guys in case you would like to do this, okay? Now, you load this page, here's what you see, all right? And there's a video there, obviously it's me talking, but it'll give you the overview of this. And then you can scroll through this page, it'll show you who it's for, why you might want us to look at the store, that it's not a strategy call. This isn't some kind of thing where you're gonna get on a call with a salesperson. We don't have salespeople in our company. You're gonna be talking to one of our revenue optimization experts if, when you have this call. And then we're going to talk about what the call does. You can see what, how it works. You can see what you're going to get out of it, what the cost is. Uh, now, the cost on this call is actually $100, okay? So I'm not going to hide that from you guys. We're test marketing this as a, something we want to see if we want to offer as a service for more money. But we're going to ask you for $100 to have us audit your store, spend basically an hour on the phone with one of our experts. However, you will not pay until after the audit is completed and only if you felt blown away by the value. So you're not gonna have to spend any money to book your call. You're gonna be able to get on the call, have the audit, and if you're not blown away, then you don't pay. But if you are blown away, then obviously you'll talk to our revenue optimization expert, they'll give you a link and you can pay your $100 fee. 
If you don't love it, don't pay for it, okay? Because we're just testing this out to see if this is something we want to offer as a service. But all the details are on here. You can see the form to get to request it and book your call, testimonials, everything you need to know is right here on this page. And all you got to do to get here is go to buildgrowscale.com forward slash audit dash my dash store. Take you right here. You get all the details. No pressure one way or the other. This is just something that people have been asking us for. So we're trying to figure out a way to offer it that makes sense both for our company and for you as the customer. So check it out. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed this. And I will see you guys in the next video. And if you have not subscribed yet, subscribe, click the like button, let us know, leave a comment, and then you'll get notified when we release new videos. All right. So see you guys in the next video.